There are plenty of ways that an NFL career can end. More commonly, it's either age, ability, or injury. But what about the players who were talented but could not control their weight? Today, we have a list of players who ate themselves out of the NFL. We'll start with Carlos Williams, former running back of the Buffalo Bills. Williams was a fifth round pick out of Florida State, but didn't really have a conventional college career. He played as a backup safety and kick returner during his first two seasons, but moved to running back early in his junior year. He even took a 65-yard run to the house in his first collegiate carry versus Nevada in 2013. Unfortunately for Williams, the competition for carries was tough as he backed up Devontae Freeman in 2013 and Dalvin Cook in 2014, both of whom went on to be stars at the NFL level. Carlos did average 5.9 yards per carry in college, so not too shabby. In his rookie season in the NFL, the guy was a big play waiting to happen. Just just like in college, his first ever carry in the NFL went for a 26-yard touchdown versus the Colts. He did have to back up LaShawn McCoy, but he was already used to backing up great running backs in college. Williams was second in the NFL in yards per carry that rookie season for players with at least 100 attempts. He was one of the most efficient backs in the entire league and was also top 10 in rushing touchdowns with seven. He tied the league record for consecutive games to start a career with a touchdown going for a touchdown in each of his first six games. He finished with a total of nine touchdowns that rookie season. It looked like the Bills found their next star running back, but shockingly, Williams never played in the NFL after that rookie season. Williams entered Bills training camp in 2016 already behind the eight ball, having been suspended the first four games for violating the league's substance abuse policy. He also showed up to camp 20 pounds heavier, and he went on to blame his wife's pregnancy as an excuse to eat more. Which I guess is valid, but like, come on man, take some responsibility. The Bills were so concerned with the weight gain that they held him out of practice until he got his weight under control. Williams, who weighed about 225 to 230 the season prior, had ballooned up to 261 pounds. And on August 20th, before the season even started, the Buffalo Bills released him. In the middle of that 2016 season, he got onto the Steelers practice squad. But a month later, he was suspended again, this time for 10 games. After being released by the Steelers in March of 2017, it took just a few months for Williams to be suspended for a third time. He was not reinstated to the NFL for almost two years, and was first eligible to return to the NFL on February 21st of 2019. At this point, no NFL team wanted to deal with the headaches, but Williams signed with a CFL team for the 2020 season. However, due to COVID, the league was canceled for the year and Williams decided to announce his retirement in May of 2021, before even getting a chance to play. After his playing career, he went on to start a training business which helps players train at every level, and his knowledge of playing defense and offense in college definitely helps. He did take accountability for his actions and basically throwing away his career, but it is good to see him bounce back after football. His rookie season was special, he looked like a more explosive DeMarco Murray, but sadly, his career only lasted for 11 games. Our next name on the list is Albert Hainsworth. Hainsworth is notoriously known for signing one of the richest contracts in league history and being out of football three years later. But how did this all happen? After being the 15th overall pick by the Titans in 2002, he played seven seasons in Tennessee and put up his best numbers in the last two seasons of his Tennessee career. In 2007 and 2008, Hainsworth found himself top five in defensive player of the year voting both years, and he made first team all pro in both of those years. With that great production though, came a bad temper and eventually a terrible work ethic. Hainsworth had multiple instances of unnecessary roughness calls and even got suspended five games in 2006 for stomping on the Cowboys center's head while his helmet was off. That five game suspension at the time was the second longest suspension in NFL history for an on-field incident. However, he did bounce back from it and became one of the most dominant defensive linemen in the league. His first year in Washington after signing that massive contract, it was draining. The team went 3-9 and nine in games he played in, he was not a fan of his role, he publicly questioned whether he could last there long term, and he didn't really get along with the coaches. He also made a minimal impact on the field, whether it was induced by the scheme or not. The following season, he didn't even show up to OTAs, and when he finally did show up to training camp, he was so out of shape that 
he was failing conditioning tests. It was also a new group of coaches that year, and the Redskins switched from a 4-3 to a 3-4 defense, and Hainsworth was not happy about it. He also weighed in over 360 pounds in April, when he was supposed to be playing around 330, but apparently he did get the weight down before the season. The highlight of Hainsworth's 2010 season was a play in Week 10 versus the Eagles on Monday Night Football, where he literally laid on the ground during the middle of a pass rush and had no motivation to rush at Michael Vick. As a result, Vick had about 8 seconds to throw and that play resulted in an Eagles touchdown. A few weeks later in week 13, he was made inactive, allegedly showing up to practice hungover and missing a team meeting. A week later, it was announced that he would be suspended for the remainder of the season without pay, and he never played for Washington again. In the offseason of 2011, Hainsworth went to New England for a fifth round pick, but only lasted nine weeks on that roster before being released. Rumor was that he had words with Patriots assistant coach Pepper Johnson after Hainsworth underperformed on the field. He did get claimed by Tampa Bay and played in seven games there, but in February of 2012, Hainsworth, who was now 30 at that time, was released by Tampa Bay and never was signed by a team ever again. His post-playing career has been a bit unfortunate based on some health issues and a few near-death experiences, but now he seems to be living a normal life with his kids based on his Instagram post. Our next player on the list is Eddie Lacy. Lacy was mocked for his weight well before playing in his first NFL game. I remember this like it was yesterday for some reason. I was in high school, it was during the summer of 2013, and this picture of Eddie Lacy surfaced around Twitter and he looked big. Maybe it was a bad angle, but the second round pick now had to beat the he's not in shape allegations. There were concerns about Lacey's work ethic coming out of Alabama, and he reportedly gained about 10 pounds from the time between the draft and when spring practices began. Lacey's combine results listed him at 231 pounds, and while that's pretty big for a running back, it wasn't overly concerning yet. But by 2017, four years later, Lacey was weighing in at 267 pounds. If these rumors were in fact true, then he gained almost 40 pounds in four years. Despite playing overweight, and at some points very overweight, Lacey was really effective for the first two or three years in the NFL. His first two seasons as a Packer were really good, rushing for over 1,100 yards each year and scoring 24 total touchdowns on 4.4 yards per carry. Sure, he was in an an ideal situation with Aaron Rodgers, good weapons, a good offensive line, but still. In 2015 and 2016 though, the injuries started to pile up. Some lower body injuries and an ankle injury that kept reoccurring pretty much led to his demise. In 2017, he signed with the Seahawks, and in that contract, there was a $55,000 bonus if Lacey were able to maintain his weight and lose some weight. It's even funnier when you realize that the average income for US workers at the time was $49,000 dollars per year. So Eddie Lacy was getting paid more than the average US worker just to lose some weight. But those weren't even the full details. Lacy had to hit benchmarks every month for seven months. And when he hit those benchmarks, he would receive $55,000 every time. Seattle had him do this for seven months, meaning that Lacy could accumulate over $385,000 if he was able to just lose a certain amount of weight over certain periods of time. At that time, this was the largest weight-related incentive in any contract in NFL history, surpassing Vince Wilfork, who was given $300,000 total. Although he slimmed down, 2017 was not too kind to Eddie Lacy. He only totaled 179 rushing yards on a horrendous 2.5 yards per carry. He was even made a healthy and active for the final month of the year. Russell Wilson led that team in rushing by a decent amount, so not the best year for any Seattle running back. After 2017, Lacy never played in the NFL again. He did attend the tryout with Baltimore in 2019, but they passed up on him. Based on his Instagram, he seems to be in pretty good shape today, but there's a good chance that those lower body injuries zapped the explosiveness he had, and he no longer produced the way he used to. Our fourth guy on the list is another running back, and it's Michael Turner, who last played for the Falcons in 2012. Turner was a fifth round pick in 2004 by the Chargers, same draft class as Chargers legend Eli Manning. He did a 
great job backing up the best back in the league at the time, LaDainian Tomlinson. Over four seasons in San Diego, Turner averaged a ridiculous five and a half yards per carry. In 2008, though, he hit free agency and was looking for a starting job. He went to the Atlanta Falcons on a six-year deal. Man, could you imagine a 26-year-old running back today signing a six-year deal? People would lose their freaking minds. 2008, though, his first year in Atlanta was a career year for Turner. He led the league in carries, ran for nearly 1,700 yards, and had 17 touchdowns. His follow-up season to that in 2009, though, was a bit of a letdown after suffering a high ankle sprain and missing five games. Turner also contributed his 2009 season to being overweight, and he took accountability for it. He was listed at 244, but Jim Trotter of Sports Illustrated claimed that he was well past 250 and struggled to get his practice jersey over his gut. A little bit harsh, but okay. After watching his diet and cutting out the greasy foods, as he put it, he bounced back in 2010 and 2011 to have really good seasons. In 2012, though, Turner had by far the lowest yards per carry of his career. He was at 3.6 yards per carry and only rushed for 800 yards total, his lowest since being in Atlanta. After that season, Turner failed a physical and was released by the Falcons. The reason for the failed physical was never specified, but you'd have to imagine that it had to be weight related and maybe loss of explosiveness, but he was only 30 years old. He also battled a groin injury for a couple years, so it's probably a combination of all those things. In a farewell post on Facebook to Falcons fans, Turner wrote that he believes there was a lot left in the tank, but he never even had a tryout for another NFL team, as far as we know. After getting no interest from teams, he had no other choice but to retire. Our final player on the list, it's a recent one, so it's fresh in our mind, it's Isaiah Wilson. From the moment Wilson was drafted, it seemed like a reach by the Tennessee Titans. He was taken 29th overall in the first round, so he had some big shoes to fill as Jack Conklin, the former right tackle, went to the Browns. The most memorable thing about Wilson's career probably happened on draft night, which is not a good thing. There was this hilarious video of Isaiah Wilson's mom dragging her son's girlfriend off the couch on national TV. Wilson was definitely a project, but had things you could not teach, particularly his 6'6", 350 pound frame. His career though got off to a bad start as it possibly could. He was placed on the COVID reserve list twice in the preseason and got into legal trouble just three days before the first game of the season. On the Friday night before their Monday night football game, Wilson was arrested for DUI. Not the best look. In his rookie season, Wilson only appeared in one game and only played four snaps the entire season. He was later suspended in week 13 for violating team rules, but they wouldn't specifically say what he did wrong. In January of 2021, he again got in trouble with the law. This time, he was arrested at gunpoint after a police chase where Wilson's vehicle reached 140 miles per hour. There were also a few other charges, including possession of marijuana. After the worst rookie season imaginable, he started his offseason by tweeting he would never play for the Titans again. But soon, he deleted that tweet, but everyone knew it was there. Not even a month later, the first round pick from a year prior was sent to the Dolphins for a seventh round pick. And in that trade, the Titans also also sent over a 7th round pick, so they essentially got nothing for this guy. His career as a Dolphin lasted 3 freaking days. He was late for his physical and did not attend a couple of workouts that he already said he was going to attend. So Miami, they moved on fast. Through the first three weeks of the 2021 season, which was his second year in the league, Wilson was still a free agent. But in late September, he got signed to the Giants practice squad, giving him a chance to team up with his former teammate at Georgia, who lined up on the other side of the offensive line, Andrew Thomas. The good news was he was on an NFL roster. The bad news was he showed up out of shape. For Wilson, it wasn't just the weight issues that kept him from excelling, he reportedly fell asleep in Giants meetings on a regular basis, and eventually the coaches were fed up. Wilson was released by the Giants in January of 2022. To add insult to injury, I mean truthfully he was never going to get signed again probably, but the NFL suspended Wilson for the first three games of the 2023 season for undisclosed reasons. He's still just 24, but between being out of shape, legal trouble, a bad attitude, and pure laziness, his career is probably over sadly. He delayed his instant Instagram and is rarely active on Twitter, so truthfully, I don't know what he's up to these days. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the video of five players that ate themselves out of the league. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you did for more NFL videos, and I'll talk to you guys next time.